If you can go ahead and hit that red button. You know what? That's good people right there. Thank you, Soros. All right, guys. If you guys need the recording after this, the only way you guys can get it is reach out to the person who invited you. That's how you'll be able to get the recording. If there's any links or downloadables after two, again, the person who invited you will be able to send those out. Guys, we do these trainings every two weeks. As you know, it's open to the public. We believe that we are better together. And I'll tell you what, um, I'm really excited to bring you guys Kelly and Andreas. I've known them personally for since four years ago when I met them in Key West at a different mastermind. And, you know, they told me, oh, we're the Airbnb king and queen. And I believed them then. And I'll tell you what, they continue to prove us right until now. So I'm really excited to bring Kelly and Andreas to you guys. And especially so because their story is, I believe their story is very unique and it's a very cool one. So Kelly and Andreas, welcome to the call and let's meet the Airbnb king and queen. Thank you so much, Nick. You're amazing, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for putting this together. This is really amazing. I always love to, uh, to share, you know, uh, what we've done, what we can accomplish yeah. and, you know, help as many people as possible in the process. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having us in. It's a pleasure yeah. to be sharing and uh, we're an open book. So anything you want to ask, feel free to <laughs> Oh, I know you are. That's why I was so excited to bring you guys on because I know you're an open book, but you know, I want to get started with uh, how you like, how you guys have built this Airbnb empire that you have, because I know a lot of people are like, yeah, I want to get into it, but this, this, and this are happening. So I want to get started with like your guys' story to get started, like how you guys first, well, like, you can tell you guys met, but like decided to start building this empire. Sure, sure. So uh, I started in real estate in 2014 and I was like, you know what? I need to become a millionaire. You know, that, that's, that's the point. I, I don't want to worry about money. Uh, and I just kept looking at how to become a millionaire online. And they just said, you know, real estate, real estate, real estate. So I was like, okay, this, this is pretty cool. It's, and what it's were work. you doing at the time, Andres? At the time, I was I probably had like seven different businesses. I was selling flowers. I was selling dogs. Yeah. Uh, I was selling life insurance. I, I've always been very, very active. I, I also had uh, a, an investment in a, in a cigar shop. So, you yeah. know, I, I was all over the place back then. Yeah. Uh, but uh, once I laid my eyes on real estate, I basically went 100% full board. And I've been in love with it since. So in 2014, um, I decided to, you know, to get into the real estate business. I got my real estate license in 2015 and, and I did my first flip in 2015. That was my goal. I got my license because I, I knew I was going to be an investor and I knew that I wanted to, you know, I was going to buy and sell properties. So might as well make commissions on top of that. Right. So did my first flip in 2015. That was cool. You know, made a hundred percent return on, on my money in six months, months, which is pretty awesome. Right. I saw how the, the rich make their money work for them. And I just fell in love with that, that concept. 2016, uh, met my wife, Kelly, uh, best, one of the best years of my life. Uh, yeah. and also the first year that we actually got into Airbnb. So I bought my first primary in 2016 with her, uh, and it was an FHA loan. Uh, and we bought a three bedroom, two bath with a one car garage. And yeah, yeah. so we lived in the master bedroom and then we rented out the other two rooms on Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, each room was making back then like 1200 bucks a month. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Then we converted the one car garage that we had in that house to a studio efficiency apartment. Um, and we put a full kitchen, full bath, independent entrance. And just from the one car garage, we were generating over $2,000 a month uh, on Airbnb and then 1200 bucks per room. So we were, you know, we were grossing over 400, $4,000 a month. I want to backtrack a little bit. Cause I feel like we're going to dive into like what you guys have done in the creative solutions that you've done to create these different Airbnbs. And I want to get a little bit more of your backstory. Cause I think that's really important for some of those people out there who don't believe they're in a position to really build out what you guys have. I right. want to kind of backtrack a bit and get Kelly's perspective. Cause I know uh, when you met Kelly, Kelly, what, what, what was going on in your guys, both your guys life at the time when you guys met? Well, at the time we met, I think we were at a point where we were hanging, looking yep. for opportunities. And yep. we both knew that we had different talents that yep. we can get together and basically make it work. So it was like kind of that perfect balance, mm -hmm. even though there was a scarcity mindset, there wasn't yep. that much money. There wasn't uh, that much people around us that knew uh, what we were looking for. Uh, yeah. So I will tell you that uh, from the beginning, it wasn't as easy. But what made it happen was the commitment, the faith, yeah. and basically the hunger of just wanting to achieve success. No matter what, no matter how, there is always going to be obstacles in the way, and that is okay. But the fact is, how are we going to overcome there? Thus, coming from a third world country, um, yeah. not even speaking the language is perfect, not understanding yeah. the way it works, the way the, the, the business moves is 
it's yeah. difficult and if we can do it i can definitely believe that everybody else that's in this call can do it yeah and yeah. that's uh one of the yeah probably one of the best things that have helped us is just no matter what is going on always yeah. believing that there is a reason why everything's happening and there yeah. are no mistakes. I do not believe in mistakes. I think everything is a lesson for, and every yeah. part of the process has has had to be there because if it wasn't right. because of that, I wouldn't have been here. Right. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when, when I see the American dream and all these things, sometimes I lose faith. And then I hear your guys' story, like, especially Kelly, like I wanted to get, like, that's what I was kind of looking for to get into that too, where sure. when I first met Kelly, you did like, you came over here from where, and you weren't even speaking English. <laughs> so yeah. I'm originally from Medellin, Colombia, yep. representando mi gente, and yep. uh, came here basically looking for the American dream with my yep. parents, but I didn't speak any English at all. So I couldn't get into yep. real estate right away. I started cleaning <laughs> offices and working at a restaurant. So yep. I will do the night shift and the day shift, just working, trying to make my best of it. It's the best opportunity that I had. And yep. I met this guy the first meeting, the first day we had, he starts introducing me our real estate. He's like, why don't you get your license? And I can guarantee yeah. that you can make at least 40,000 your first year in real estate. <laughs> I thought about it. I'm like, those are good numbers. And <laughs> I like marketing. And that's where I, that's what my forte is. And he's like, I need help with marketing. So that's how we started working together. Yeah. And ended up working amazing because Andres is very analytical. He looks for his, the finances side of the business. He's the execution and the visionary. And I'm right. the one that's holding it together, organizing it, setting it up. These designing it, making it work better, making sure that the details go in place. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much in 2016. We met in March. We started living together in July. We got married in September. That was a <laughs> hell of a year. We yeah. started our first Airbnb in June, July, when we moved together, 2016. This was a one-car garage. It was yeah. about a 200 square feet, two car garage that we, a one car garage that we converted into a studio with yeah. an independent entrance, a kitchenette. It already had a shared laundry with the mass with the house. Yeah. It was a perfect setup for it. And the mortgage of the house was only about like $1,200 $1, total. Yeah. We were renting the one car garage for 2000 a month. Yeah. Just a garage. And that's where we rented out the two other bedrooms because we found out this is an amazing opportunity. So instead of just <laughs> having regular roommates or long-term rentals, let's just start changing yeah. everything slowly to Airbnb. But back then, the story yeah. was different as well. So there was a lot more flexibility with everything. This is back in 2016. Not a lot of people knew about Airbnb, which yeah. is also one of the things that helped. You know, we got into the business when it was the at the beginning of it, and it was a lot more, more flexible. I will tell you that we were not doing uh as good as we do it now and that's one of the things that andres uh, reminds me always it does not have to be perfect in order to execute on it and that's one of the things i want to bring out as well because the the fact that we didn't have our airbnbs perfect set it up in 2016 yeah. <laughs> did not matter for the end result today yeah. the execution wow. was the main point I love that. And, you know, just, just the fact that, like you guys said, you did the two bedrooms and then you took a look at the garage and like, what are some of the things that you need to do in order to take that garage and like meet the Airbnb standards uh, for it? Yeah. So usually with, uh, when we do garage conversions, cause this is what we do nowadays. Now, you know, anytime that we buy a house or the garage, we look at it as an opportunity to make an additional $2,500 a month. Uh, usually the return cash on cash to convert a garage is a hundred percent, sometimes 50%, depending on the cost. But yeah, we usually put in a web bar. Uh, we put in, um, yeah, full bathroom, independent entrance. We try to make it about four or 500 square feet. And um, and usually from the garage, we'll make anywhere from $2,000 to $2,500 a month, covering the mortgage taxes, insurance, and utilities of that property. So so yeah, part of, part of the strategy how we started was uh, we bought the primary, lived there for a year. And after a year, we went and bought another primary. Uh, and then we basically did the same thing. Um, we bought a house that house had actually a shed in the back, uh, yeah. <laughs> that the previous owner had converted into like a little tiny house. It wasn't, it was kind of run down though, but yeah. we took that idea and we, it was a 180 square foot shed and yeah. we converted it into a really nice tiny house. And to this day, that tiny house has paid the mortgage taxes insurance from a shed. <laughs> uh, the good thing about Airbnb is that it's pretty flexible. So yeah. you can pretty much rent out anything, right? As long as somebody's willing to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we did that shed conversion. That was really awesome. Uh, we also, uh, in, in the next house, we also converted the carport into another 
in last week one of the ways that we're that we're doing the conversions is yeah. um we're basically just adding a master bedroom with yeah. a web bar and that makes it 100 percent legal as long as it's connected uh to your main house because all these are single family homes uh so we just look at real estate a little bit differently uh, every single family house that we have we look at it as multiple streams of income we see all the doors all the exterior doors we see the garage and we see that as opportunity so each of our houses could be a single family but we we, we have two or three or four doors renting from it all with independent entrances all with web bars uh all on airbnb and usually, you know, each small unit will do at least 1500 to 1800 a month. So we, we lived in that house. We did the same thing. We lived in the master bedroom, rented out the other, other two rooms. Then we bought another house a year after, bought another primary. And now this is the house that we're in. And this house is pretty awesome. It was a four bedroom, three bath, about 2,300 square feet. We yeah. converted the garage. We added two more bathrooms. And now we made it into a seven bedroom, five bath. Uh, we converted that carport. Units. Yeah, so, so the house that we, we're in right now, yeah. It's about 3000 square feet. We live in 500 square feet. We live yeah. in our garage conversion. We, one of the reasons why we've been able to uh, excel so quickly is because we live below our means. We, we try to take in all our income and just reinvest it back mm -hmm. into new properties. So yeah, so our house where we live in, I live in 500 square feet with my beautiful wife. And then we rent out the other three units uh, on Airbnb. And just from the house that we live in, our primary, after paying expenses, we're, we're at about 3,500 a month, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we've just basically done that strategy over and over and over again. And, uh, and right now we have uh, 54 doors on Airbnb. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I've been, is that the place that I was over uh, about like, a, uh, I think it was, it was like the greenish house. Is it green? Uh, yes. I think you've been there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you were. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Go. Yeah. So it is a really cool place. And you know, I think that's, man, that's one of the real reasons, like one of the big reasons I want to bring you guys on here today. Cause you guys got really creative with how you did your Airbnb. Most people would look at a home and be like, all right, well here, here's a house that like, this is going to be one Airbnb, but yeah. you've taken them and made them as much as like three, four Airbnbs in one place. <laughs> So what are some of the things that you look for when you're looking for homes that you can turn into Airbnb? What are some of the specs or qualities in a home that you're looking for that really make it stand out to you? Sure. So first of all, rules and regulations are very important. So depending on where you are, where you live, you got to know what you can or can't do. There you guys are, are in Orlando. Areas. I saw some so people we, ask, we're in Orlando. Sure. Yeah, we're in Orlando. So um, Orange County, City of Orlando have completely different rules and regulations. It's all It all breaks down to your municipality, right? So first, know where you're buying and make sure that whatever your strategy you're going to do is legal, right? If you're going to do daily rentals, make sure the city allows it. If you're going to do um, corporate housing, make sure the city allows it. If there's an HOA that you're thinking about buying in, make sure that their rules and regulations uh, apply, right? What we like to do is no HOA. I don't like HOA. We already have a government that tells us what to do. I don't yeah. want somebody, and I have my wife tell me what to do. So I don't want another uh, you know, <laughs> uh, body telling me what to do. So I don't like HOAs. None of our houses have any HOAs. That's part of the, the strategy. I like single family and I like block. You know, that, that's, that's one, one, one pretty good thing. We love corner lots. And we love weird layouts. I love weird conversions. Like define like, like weird, weird layouts. Yeah, it, what, it, like like a bedroom, like f a house that has like four or five different bedrooms that were added. And it's got like a garage that was converted and all, all those ugly looking houses that nobody wants. That's not a cookie cutter. Those are the ones that we love. The ones that have three bathrooms, the ones that have four bathrooms. Those are the ones that we look for uh, mm -hmm. because the more bathrooms, the more units. The That's more the way that we see a house. If, okay. if I see a house that has four bathrooms, I see four different rental opportunities. And mm. I know that, let's say, out of a master bedroom, what I yeah. can do is I can take a beautiful little window, right? I'll take that window down, I'll turn it into a, uh, a door, and boom, now I have a studio apartment, right? Because the master bedroom already has you know, a bathroom attached. I can probably look at the, the plumbing and add a little web bar, and boom, now out of the master bedroom, we can make 1800 bucks a month. We have, we have a master bedroom in one of our houses that makes $2,000 a month consistently, a master bedroom, about 200 square feet. So those types of things, um, it's, it's house hacking at its finest, basically. Mm -hmm. Basically yeah. turning a single family, which is a, is a very affordable product. Because if you go into multifamily, duplexes, triplexes, quads, and we do have them, you do pay a premium. You yeah. do pay a premium. So with single family, you can, you can buy, It's you know. the easiest way to start with. And I saw somebody yeah. ask about an HOA and an HOA is a homeowners association. Yeah. Basically what that is, is kind of like a small little government within your community. Yeah. So that's <laughs> pretty, much. pretty much. And, I love, um, yeah. 
And, and, and from what you said, I wanted to, to mention that there is very, very, very important. And you guys should like keep this in mind. The fact of you wanting to run an Airbnb business, you have to make sure that you're going to be doing it the right way. If you want to make this a real business, you have to make sure you do it the real way. What I mean with that is getting the right permits, getting yeah. the right licensing, yeah. and speaking with the county, making your homework. I know there's a lot of Airbnbs on Orange County, on yeah. Orlando, and you guys may yeah. be thinking, what is going on with those people that are making Airbnbs? And I will tell you this. It is very easy to get in Airbnbs if you're doing it as a hobby and you just like the feeling of having an Airbnb. I know it, it does sound cool, and I know it's uh, some of the things that people are getting into because it's kind of like the, como se dice la moda, the trend yeah, the of trend. the year, but you got to be careful because this is not a hobby. This is a real business that you have to put money, time, effort, everything into it, and you got to make sure that you're going to be protected. Yeah. When we started, we weren't even really paying look at the uh, at the rules. There was no rules here, yeah. honestly. But right now, it's been to the point where you do have to make sure you bring this professionalism into the business because the competition is way too big. So all everybody else that pretty much has Airbnbs around, they may be doing it illegally, most likely. And that may be okay until you start <laughs> until growing and growing and yeah. a neighbor catches you and then calls the county code enforcement and right there you will be shut down in a couple seconds so be careful with that yeah so i would say get, get licensed uh through the dbpr uh basically get like a it's, it's a hotel license basically yeah. that's For probably one of the one of the first yeah one of the first things to do at least here in florida i, I can't really speak too much from for any other states, but at least here in Florida, you always have to register with the DBPR. I think you have to pay like 700 bucks a year. You get your legitimate license. Now you can either be a property management for yourself or a property manager for somebody else. Uh, obviously you have to register through the, to the state uh, so you can get your business tax. You have to register in the county as well so you can pay those taxes. Um, and then again, I would always look into the municipalities that are local to your market that allow the permitting for it. So for example, in city of Orlando, you can pull a permit and you can have an STR, short-term rental permit, a license that turns it into a business that now you can sell at a cap rate, right? Much better than, you know, an, an Airbnb that's not, you know, it's kind of unregulated, you know, the county is not really looking into it. Oh, that's that's area. not really scalable. So if I were to do it all over again, I would target the, the, the areas in your community, local to it, uh, that allow the permitting. For example, in Melbourne, city of Melbourne, this is about an hour away from Orlando, the city passed an ordinance allowing Airbnb. So you can legally get a license and you can rent your property daily, right? In Largo on the West Coast, close to uh, you know Clearwater, you can legally go to the county, go to the city and get a daily permit license. That right there is valuable. In the next couple of years, I think that all these big hedge funds are gonna start looking at short-term rentals. Maybe they are now. There are some that are already buying right now at a cap rate. You could buy a three hundred thousand dollar house and and have it valued at six hundred thousand dollars at a ten percent cap rate because now that area allows short-term rental and now you have that license. So I think that's gonna be a long-term play. Investing in areas that already allow short-term rental that you can get a permit so nobody can take that away from you because we uh, we didn't do it like that. You know, we started in 2016. There was no regulations. And we got over 20 notices from Orange County and city of Orlando in to cease days. and desist. They told us, if you don't stop your business, we're going to find you $1,000 a day. And that was no a rude awakening. Things. We had no idea what we were going to do. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, we had over, I don't know, $30,000 a month in expenses easily to yeah. cover. And I was like, wow, are we just, what, what are we going to do? We're going to pivot. Um, so at least in our area, we had already bought about 20 houses in, in Orange County. We said, crap what are we gonna do we can't just sell so them. we so we looked at the rules the regulations and yeah you can't do daily rental in orange county but what can you do you, you can cannot. do at least you cannot you cannot do it in orange county <laughs> unless it's r3 zoning um what did we do we saw at catch, what we r3. could do uh and it was uh corporate housing so let's yeah. explain a little bit about the r3 because that's uh one of the most important things so there are kind of like i wouldn't say loopholes but ways to make yeah. it work 
And one of those is if you are in an R3 zoning within Orange County, you are allowed to get your transient rental permit. And a transient rental is related to a short-term rental permit. It's something that is still relatively new for Orange County, but they kind of fit it into the same box as like adult living facilities, daycares, and things like that. So if you have R3, like you can do a duplex, you can also do your Airbnb. And then for Orlando specifically, um, this is also important to know that yes, you can do it in downtown Orlando, but it has to be within city of Orlando and it cannot have any HOA, no homeowners associations. And you can only do up to 50% of the house on Airbnb. What that means is that whatever total amount of bedrooms the property has, you can only do half of the bedrooms. So you will have to either do it Airbnb per bedrooms instead of per unit, unless you have the possibility of making a division or if it's maybe already a duplex, that will be one of the best cases. With a duplex, you will rent one long term and the other one can be Airbnb. You do have to apply the license for it, but you can get the permit. And I think that's really important too. Like, like you were saying, like the checklist of deciding what area you're going to go into and do this. Number one, being legally able to do it, but then there's also different financial gains to being able to do it as well. So are there other things that you guys look for? Like as far as like picking out the right area, whether it's legally or just like some different perks to picking out the different areas? We do, uh, we definitely look for school zones. We wanna be in really good school zones, even though we're not looking to rent these properties long-term, the appreciation of it is very important. And we know that being in good school zones is gonna guarantee that we're gonna have that good appreciation. So that's what number one. Uh, number two, uh, houses that have the weirdest layouts, just like Andres mentioned. If you yeah. see that the house is weird and it does not make sense, that one is a perfect option for an Airbnb or an investment opportunity. Because first of all, you're gonna have uh, probably an opportunity of negotiating this best. It's not going to feed everybody else's box. And then you can turn it around and divide the space as best as possible. Like our house, it was the ugliest and weirdest house. When Andres found it, I did not want to buy it. I love it. And I did love not want to move into it. I think he negotiated more with the seller than with me because I was already part of it. But the, play, the thing is the opportunity. So anyway, uh, corner lots, Corner lots are great because you, you have the parking and the option of dividing it. Um, block homes ideal, but don't be afraid of the wood ones because we also have some wood ones and they've been staying there. We had one that was almost 100 years old with an original metal roof that we bought for $30,000 in the land and we were renting it for 900 for like, I don't even know how many years. That was one of the best returns we had. So never be afraid of the ugliest kind of shitty houses. Those are the opportunity ones. So you know, like, you in a house? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I was gonna say uh, something that like that was that that I'm thinking of right now. It's like, man, if I'm getting like the ugly, weird looking homes, how do you differentiate from yourself on the competition and keep getting them filled out? What are some of the strategies that you guys use to make sure that your Airbnbs consistently get filled? So um, we focus on quality and service. So that's one of the things we've been putting a lot more into. We don't just manage this ourselves. And I know that was one of the questions somebody asked if we manage the properties ourselves. We don't do it ourselves. We set up a team for it. We were doing it until maybe five units, uh, but then we started setting up these people that are making sure that the communication, communication is number one. Communication has to be really, really, really on top with them. You have to make sure that your average response rate has to be lower. You have to make sure that you're constantly changing up your listings, like changing out the photos, changing out the descriptions, moving a couple of things. Airbnb constantly is adding new features and widgets and things. And if you do not update your listings, they're not going to be showing up uh, as the highest results, just like Zillow, think about it, right? Every time you change the price on your house, uh, it brings up on Zillow to the top. So the same thing on Airbnb. Uh, one of the things that we differentiate, uh, that's, that's what I focus on. I try to bring an experience. More than just an Airbnb, this is an experience. And I want to make sure that this person is still uncomfortable and living something different. So every place that we have, even though it is an ugly house, we're going to set it up to be into something beautiful and maybe turn it into a palace and make it very unique. I like to uh, maybe bring things from my culture as well into it, different type of designs and styles that you may not see here that are different. And especially the way we divide these places, that's the way we make it work. 
because we lower a risk. We have less risk having more options, right? So the more doors we have, we can have maybe one or two rented. So that's gonna cover at least our expenses. That way we can keep uh, higher occupancy. Yeah, I, I, we, we look at the, uh, the real estate as the long-term play, right? We're gonna keep these properties un until we die, right? 30 plus years if we can. And that really is gonna be the real wealth building. The cash flow that we get from Airbnb is cool. That's that's money to reinvest. But the long term play is the real estate. That's that's where the biggest money is made. Like McDonald's, dude, they, they, they're in real estate, right? Uh, so we always buy in good areas, A, A or B, that are up and coming because of the long term appreciation. Um, and uh, and yeah, and that's that's part well, of. I think that, that that was a really big nugget right there, especially making sure that they get like it's great. You can do everything right, but if they're not getting filled. Then nothing. Then that that you're not making any money. So just like like you said, updating it consistently, updating the pictures, getting the new features to make sure it stays at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and being able to sleep more people. The more people you sleep, the better. So instead of getting a normal couch, you know, get a day bed. You know, get get two more bed. beds. Get they, they get two more people because at the end of the day, if you're sleeping twelve people mm. or fifty people, you're gonna have less competition. And there's gonna be more people. They're gonna be able to split three hundred bucks a night. Right. So, so one thing that I would talk, say talk about that a little bit too, about like the sleep and like how important it is to have more bed, be able to fill more people. So that way you're able to do that. That is extremely important because we're trying to maximize the space utilization, space utilization at its finest. And basically the fact of why we like to devise places is we don't really believe in the American dream that has been sold of having this huge biggest house that you are literally wasting. And that has correlations also with some uh, the narrative 10 principles, which I'm going to get into it in a little bit. Uh, but uh, basically, the way we divide it is if there is, for example, a laundry room, we like to look at laundry rooms and see them as bathroom opportunities. Why? Because the plumbing is already there and the, uh, the connections are already there. Same thing like the beds. We just turn a laundry room into a small bedroom and I fitted a day bed with two twins there. That gives me the possibility of two more people sleeping there. That may raise my price at least $50 a night, at least that. Um, so thinking about being minimalist, being simple, you don't have to do the most expensive things on Airbnb either and especially talking about beds for example you don't want to go buy like the nicest things because people are not going to probably take care of it as best mm -hmm. but you also don't want to buy the cheapest so don't go to Ikea uh, but usually I set up every bed has to have at least a queen size bed every bedroom has at least a queen size bed two nightstands, one dresser, the TV, and then the living room is set up for another sleeping area. I will usually add a day bed with two twins or a sofa bed that turns into a bed. And there are also like some futons and things like that. Basically think of it like any space in the house that you have, instead of having it with a dead table, think of it if the possibility of being somebody else, which that means more money. Yeah, man. <laughs> I saw somebody's like, don't hate on Ikea. <laughs> I like Ikea, yeah, though. I, I, I love yeah. the design of it. And I think it's yeah. very practical and minimalistic. Right. But I do not like the, it is not real wood. And it, what happens is it keeps expanding. And uh, we've had a lot of beds broken. <laughs> oh, and yeah. you all know what people are getting into it. So you yeah. just got to be real and buy some metal stuff. <laughs> that, that that is actually a very good pro tip right there you know you never know what they're getting into at these <laughs> at i'm these buying everything metal more durable yeah. at the end of the day when am i getting investment that lasts us for a long time yeah and you know something else that i think you guys have done a really great job at is um like talking about like the upkeep of like upkeeping with 50 doors like what are some of the different ways that you guys are starting into once somebody leaves the airbnb like what happens next yeah, so now we, we grew our team. So now um, we have a quality control person that manages the cleaners. So, uh, you know, we, we hired her full time and her job is basically just to walk the properties inside, outside, uh, before the cleaners go, after the cleaners go to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to, to make sure they're reporting any, any damages. And then she gets back to us and lets us know, you know, how everything is. So, so checks and balances are very important. Uh, we have a VA that takes care of all the communication. I would yeah. think VAs are, you know, they're, they're the best, the best, the best, because that's something that could be done virtually. And instead of paying, you know, $15 an hour, Hey, might as well pay three to $5 an hour elsewhere. So you can maximize, you know, your, you know, your, your income. Right. And you're still going to get a quality product. 
And that um, communication, like what, what's the community for someone who's never done Airbnb? Like what is some of that communication that that VA handles? Was- Everything. She, she does, yeah, she does all the communication. So if a guest inquires about, you know, uh, uh, does the pool heat have heat or how many people that can it sleep, how many queen bed, all the questions that come in, she handles everything, yeah. everything, everything. She coordinates with, we have another property manager uh, that handles claims. Um, she's a little bit on a higher level. Um, and then we have the quality control that handles all the cleanings. Yeah, basically so, it's three managers in our team. Yeah. Us two, and then we have, and then you have to make sure you have the connections for uh, the handymans, for example, and your your vendors in general. You have to make sure you have a plumber, an electrician, a roofer, and uh, everybody, everybody, lawn care, pool care, pest control, every single thing, because you're going to need those people on your packet. You need them available. You got to build those relationships because this business is, uh, is an, is, it runs into urgency. Every time somebody needs something, <laughs> it's an urgency. It's yeah. not something that you're like, hey, let me call you back and I can send you your CMA later on. No, you got to yeah. fix it up right now and get to the problem right now. doesn't matter if it's 1, 2, or 3 a.m., right? And those are things you got to be okay with it if you're willing to come into this business. There is going to be the fact that you are going to make more money than a long-term business means that you're going to have to put more work. But if you do have that team set up for it, like I said, we have our three uh, managers. One is virtual, two are personal here. Then we have us two. And then we have a team of cleaners is roughly about maybe almost 10 people available. And then we have the vendors available as well. So it's a total of maybe around 30 people um, that are always available, making sure that in a day to day basis, there is always things happening. Yeah, it's, it's really important to have a good communication with the cleaning crew. Uh, if at first you're starting and you don't have enough to hire a quality control person, make sure that that cleaning person um, is, is doing videos before and after of the property for you. And there's a cool app that's called Turnover BNB, uh, which does help you either find uh, local cleaners in your market, and it also helps the cleaner know when the next cleaning is, Mm. and it allows them to have a portal where they can put in a video of what the property looks like before and what the property looks like after. Paying these people uh, a good amount of money, maybe sometimes even above market, so they can actually do an amazing job for you, I think is very important. Uh, We've always paid our cleaners very well, uh, but we also expect them to go a little bit the extra mile, right? So it depends on the property. So if the property has like a lot of game boards, if it has like, you know, Playstations or whatever the case, we need to have them do that inventory, right? We need to have them be, they're going to be looking at the property more than you, right? So the communication <laughs> with that cleaning person has to be very important. And, and I would give them a role if, 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 you know, you don't have a property management company, maybe have a role of the, the cleaner, you know, give them maybe a little bit of an incentive or a percentage for to, that person to, to be, be a the manager. Manager. Yeah, at least to, to begin. That's how you can start. You basically, and it's pretty simple. The way you can start is if you don't have anybody else, go on the internet. Turnover BNB, that's the app you mentioned. Turnover yeah. BNB is an app where you can find cleaners that live within the area that you're looking for and then can give you options of how much they're going to charge for that job. Then you can look at their reviews and based on that, choose who you want to work with. It's very reliable. They have the reviews like Airbnb, so it is a community. Another app you guys uh, should take a look at it is Hospitable. Hospitable is an app that basically is a software to run your short-term rental business. So what this is going to help you do is automate messages, send checking instructions, upload the listings, merge calendars from platform to platform, have your own website, a bunch of different things. So that's one of the apps you want to use. Hospitable, Turnover BNB, uh, what else? Uh, for, pricing, for pricing is very important, uh, beyond pricing. Beyond pricing or price labs? Those are the two that we recommend. Beyond pricing, uh, what's the second one? Uh, price labs. Price labs, yeah. yeah. Price labs, yeah. It's uh, it's basically a tool that that has historical data of the demand and supply of any local market. Um, so they have a lot of information, kind of like Zillow, and they know exactly uh, what's happening in your town. Like for example, uh, this coming week in Orlando, EDC, EDC is coming. You know, hundreds of thousands of people are coming, and you wouldn't, you may, if you're in that scene, that's awesome. Obviously, we're in it. Uh, but maybe if you're not, you wouldn't know about it, and and you don't know that in that weekend in those four days from November yeah. 7th to 11, you, you should be, you should, yeah, you, you can 10 X your money, but how do you know that? 
you need to have a software that takes care of that. So beyond pricing and price labs are probably one of the most essential things. So you don't leave money on the table. It costs about 1%, but you can usually make four to 8% more by using that product, which is, which is pretty great. Um, so automation is everything. Uh, those are the tools that we use. Uh, yeah. to make life simpler. And another tool that is very important, that's probably one of the most important tools we have in our toolbox. These are called the NAREP 10 principles. And the NAREP 10 principles are literally some of the things that have helped us get to this point. And, you, yeah. and this is correlated to NAREP, is National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And the reason why I bring it up, it is important, is because it really is important to me. If, if it wasn't because some of the principles that I have there, we wouldn't have been here, like living below our means. That's principle number three. No matter what, no matter how many properties we've, we've been growing in, we've been trying as much as possible, as best as we can to live below our means and staying broke. That way we can keep hanging and be reinvesting. So that's principle number three, live below your means and be ready for the next recession. Another one that's very important for me as well is the principle number eight, which is be physically fit, but not only physically fit, be mentally, physically, and, and solely fit, everything. We have to make sure that we are incongruous within ourselves and within what we're doing and understanding the fact of that there is not just a wanting to make the money or the, the, the fact of just having a good business, that is not really what's gonna make it. You have to make sure that your family is also good, that your health is also good, your mind, your mind, your mind and your body, because if it's not in congruence, it's probably not gonna end up working at the end of the day. So it does take effort, even outside of the day-to-day -day Airbnb business, it takes effort for us to make it happen. The way we're eating, the way we're exercising, the decisions we're taking day to day, the habits we're implementing into our lives. And that's why I bring it up and I suggest you guys encourage you to take a look at it. This is the not rep 10 principles. I will tell you that if you leave that by them, it will change your life. I love it. I love it. Guys, you dropped some absolute gems on here. We, we need to get some of these questions. I want to make sure we have enough time to get to a lot of these questions. You guys have been lighting it up. And I feel like that's what we were talking about at the beginning, seeing around the corner. One of those things that really stuck out to me is having that VA to answer the answer a lot of the, the people that come on board. Because I'm sure there's something there. They're like, that's something that I would not think about. Out of everything you just mentioned, like the communication where it's like, all right, now it's up and running. Now I just get to wash my hands and keep going. It's like, no, now you got to communicate. People ask questions. People will reach out. And just having that VA can save so much time, energy, and effort. Something else like you were talking about, like the pricing of like the pricing of the nights. EDC is coming to Orlando, which we might have to talk about. But like just having, <laughs> I might, I, I've been seeing, I saw it last year and I didn't go. So that, that's, we might have to circle. Sure. Back. Oh, you got to come. No, you're coming. You're yeah, coming. Yeah, all right. <laughs> But, you know, and also just something, too, where it's like putting the ego aside and saying, I'm not doing this to have the prettiest houses and the coolest looking houses. I'm doing this to run a business, looking for some of those weird shaped houses, turning the, the laundry room into a bathroom or another bedroom. Just having some of those little things that can literally take this and make it like a business. So, guys, if it helps you guys, here's what we're going to do. So, do, you, do I'm just out of curiosity. You guys have a checklist of something that you do that you could share with us. And also what we would like to do is we're just like, we're going to have somebody go through and put a checklist of some of these things that you guys said into this. And whoever invited you guys, will be able to send out the checklist to you guys. Is that what we can put something ever? together. Oh, even better. Even better. <laughs> guys, would that help you guys? Hey, if you guys want the checklist, just go ahead and put checklist in the chat. I want to make sure that that is something of value. Because I know some people have been asking a lot of questions and I think it will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They want the checklist. How many people we have in the call? Uh, we have about 219 currently right now. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Right, Let me know uh, what are the best questions. Let's, let's see. Yeah. Oh, here. I'll, I'll start reading some of these off to you guys. So I think this is something, again, that most people would think about. How important is it to have a TV in every room that you have? This is from Sharon. Very Sharon's important. Time. It is very important because you want to make the experience and you want to make people to be comfortable with it. And yeah. even though I don't want to be honestly, I understand that this is a need for a rental market business and for something that if you're going to a place to relax and enjoy, you want to have your TV, at least for the music. So yeah. I usually add one in every bedroom and the living room as well, because the living room is also sleeping in space yeah do you guys get cable or like what do you guys hook up anything to it only only high speed internet yeah, yeah. We, we only do that the high speed internet we do um in, in our in our city is spectrum i think it's 44.99 49.99 we don't do this. we don't do cable we don't do cable we don't do anything else Think about the, the, the less expensive stuff is always the better. And at the end of the day, there is 
Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, right. and all of these things, but we don't provide them. We don't pay for them. We just provide a Roku TV. And if you're looking for a TV, TV, just shop on walmart.com. Yeah. Don't go to Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Go to walmart.com and you're going to find some good deals. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Roku everybody has Netflix, Hulu, something to sign into. Yeah, they will sign in they with their, their own, own account. Yeah, we don't have account. to pay for it. Yep. And Roku also has their own, um, like their own cable kind of thing. It's free TV, they, basically. Yeah, they, they have some ten channels already included, like the basics. Yeah. So, so we have another question here from Clint. He's looking to buy his first Airbnb. I'm curious, how do you evaluate the Airbnbs based on like how much you'll be paying on the mortgage to how much that you could potentially make? Sure. So, um, it, it really just depends, right? So usually I like to buy houses with at least three bathrooms and that gives me at least three units. Each unit is going to make at least 2000 bucks a month. That's 6,000 gross, right? So as long as my mortgage taxes insurance is $3,000 or less, we're going to be okay. Um, I, I always like to look at the worst case scenario, right? What, what is it going to be if Airbnb goes away and I have to rent it long-term? What is the long-term market rent? And will it cover my, my nut, even if I have to do a long-term rental? Um, if it doesn't work in the long-term rental numbers, uh, we don't buy it. Um, and right now we're, we're being very conservative with what we buy for Airbnb. Right now we're, we're only buying houses that already have multiple doors there. Uh, at least two to three units that are already there, uh, or it could be possible. Um, cause usually our, our most, our average home usually grosses anywhere from six to 7,000 a month. And usually our average home will have anywhere from two to four units. Um, so we already, we already know what the market is. So it's, it's, it's very important first to study the market and know what the possibilities are in your market and invest a little bit of money, invest into uh, AirDNA. Uh, airdna.co. Right? Number one, go on AirDNA, plug in the address that you're yeah. looking to shop, Look at your competition. see what the area is. You can literally see the, the exact numbers of people are making. Yeah. Right? All that's public by AirDNA. If you pay yeah. for it, of course, yeah. that this is something you pay for it, but it's worth it. Yeah, we have access to basically the whole country in AirDNA. And AirDNA is basically like a Zillow. They have the most amount of information in the short-term rental space. And the uh, good thing is that the appraisals are considering, taking in consideration AirDNA numbers yeah. for an appraisal. If you're looking to buy a property, now that you're looking to buy a property, this yeah. may be another way of looking at it. Like they may be able to base the loan on the AirDNA numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we do have a lender that does that. Yeah, so right now some people are having issues getting loans because some of them are, they, they have to pay for themselves, right? It's a DSCR, DSCR. loan. Like what, a is, service, what is a DSCR? Debt service coverage ratio loan. So one of the one of the loans that a lot of investors uh, use uh, is a debt service coverage ratio loan. The, the Basically the house has to pay for itself, right? With the interest rates being a little bit higher now, sometimes that's not the case. But there are some specific lenders that we work with that base that rental income not on the long term but on Air, airbnb numbers or dna numbers uh so that's that's something very important to look into you have to see what uh, what type of financing you're doing and if the financing that you're doing requires uh the property to pay for itself that, that's one of, one of the very important things so i would definitely speak to a lender uh and get that situated as well first or contact us if you want to get more information on it because we can help you guys with that as well yeah Bingo. absolutely I love it. And then here's a question from Sharon too. It's uh, the, she's hearing that Airbnb is saturated across the country and people are complaining of low numbers. Have you guys experienced that? Or are some of these tips that you're saying, like sleeping more people, keeping it updated, like keeping you guys at the top for it? So we've had, it has changed. There is a lot more competition and that's understandable. If there is more competition, then there is probably less demand for it. Uh, but I will not get scared of it anyway because the rental market it, it keeps it keeps growing and growing. At the end of the day, Disney is not going anywhere. And besides that, Disney is not the only opportunity. We don't we don't have any Airbnbs close to Disney. But even though we keep our occupancy rate higher, why? Because everything we've spoken about already, the little tricks and treats and the little niches that we move around with, which is the flexible way, not the common one, is going to make sure you are successful. So if you do find your small niche within the Airbnb space, you yeah. will be successful. But if you just do just another three, two with the pool, you may not work, you may not be successful. Yeah. yeah. And I would say one way to mitigate your risk, you know, if you're scared of people that are not going on vacation anymore, 
Uh, there are two different uh, niches within Airbnb that a lot of people don't know. So the, Air, the most people that know Airbnb, they're not, they're thinking like, okay, hotel renting for one, three, five days. Uh, there's another one that's called corporate housing or midterm rentals. That's actually the one that we mainly specialize in. Most of our Airbnb properties, they're not being rented daily. They're actually being rented at at least 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Our average client stays with us for about 60 days. Um, and that market is probably a little bit more safe than the daily one, right? Because these people are either moving to Florida because they just sold their house in California and they need a couple months for their new house to build, or they just sold their house randomly and they, they need a you know, temporary place from one house to the other, or uh, nurses that are coming to Orlando to work for three to four months. Engineers, um, construction workers. Yeah, you name it. You know, your, your house just, uh, just had a fire and uh, the insurance company needs to take you to another home for Insurance three to four months plans. while you fix your house. Relocation those are the best companies. ones. So, yeah. so those, those types of things, I, I think are probably one of the best and uh, referrals. ROIs. Yeah. It, establishing a good relationship with realtors, right? Realtors always have clients that are moving, right? So, yeah. so that market in the Airbnb space, I think is definitely more safe because you get, you get basically the best of both worlds. You get a strong rental income, right? Just like how you would do daily. Cause it's very, very similar numbers but you have the mix of having somebody there for three months. So you don't have to worry about occupancy. Less and that, those three months, we had 100% occupancy. Yeah. Uh, so midterm rentals, I think, are huge. Uh, and it's it, called corporate dang. rentals. Yeah, and midterm that's rentals, what we corporate rentals. On. And it's also great for if you're in an area where, it, you know, Airbnb is not allowed and you can't do daily rental legally, okay. most of the time you can do corporate rentals because corporate rentals is what? Minimum a 30-day rental, right? Which is a month-to-month -month lease. So if in your county, you're allowed to have a month to month lease, you can probably do corporate rentals. So that's one wow. good thing that you could scale and that's nationwide. Niche. And that's what happened to us when we got, you know, 20 notices. Yeah, we had, we had <laughs> 20 notices from the county. They're like, hey, you need to cease and desist. Your business is over. You know what we did? We shifted. We went from daily rentals to yeah. corporate housing rentals. After being at the court and all, yeah. times. <laughs> and, and now we can do it legally. Because yeah. it's basically like a month to month lease. So it's wow. just all about shifting to a to an even better better market, to be honest with you. We to love honest, it. We, it's we it's like easier, it it's less management. Uh you still make the same money. Actually, you net more money because you have less expenses, less overheads. Less people involved. Um, so it's That's also easy. Easy. Yeah. run those numbers. Run those numbers. Yeah, for sure. yeah. To, to look at it as don't think don't don't put Airbnb in a box yeah. where it means Disney nightly rentals it does not have to be like that it doesn't have to be think of it of airbnb as another marketing resource yeah is another channel and just like zillow you can promote it there as well but you're free to do whatever you want as far as airbnb you do not have any restrictions as far as like what you're allowed to and i know one person asked how much airbnb charges airbnb is uh the most inexpensive channel that you have to pay for compared to all the other ones in short term rental. They only take 3% from you, the host. So that 3% is already being calculated within the price that they're paying for their total reservation. So you're covered on that pretty much kind of. Um, if you look at another uh, different channels like Verbo, Verbo, yes. HomeAway, Booking.com, Verbo has like a 5% plus an annual fee. Booking.com has a 15% fee. Uh, there's a couple, there's a lot of more of them, but Airbnb at the end of the day, they own about 80% of the market, short-term rental market in general, and it's only 3%. So that's why we choose to go with that one the most. But yeah, we did recently get into VRBO because we were well. seeing that, you know, back in September, we had like a 55, 60% occupancy. Which That's is the lowest well. we ever uh, had we in We decided to go into v, uh, VRBO and it's been going very well. So I would definitely say highly, highly suggest to go into VRBO, whether you're doing the daily rentals or whether you're doing corporate ha uh, housing. We More actually channels. just got a four month booking at like $5,000 a month from VRBO. So that's pretty cool on, on a house that my neighbor probably rents out for eighteen hundred a month. So that's, that's all, you know that's pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and um, and also uh, I would look into furnished finders as well. So furnished finders is mainly specifically for uh, nurses. Nurses Somebody who just are says looking, corporate rentals. Yeah, furnished, corporate or, furnished, yeah, finders. furnished finders. Furnished finders is hundred bucks a year uh, per listing, and wow. you know it's it's another uh, channel. Another channel that we use is uh, the MLS. You know, so I'm a realtor and we have most of our properties 
uh, on, on, on MLS. And we get leads from that. Realtors call. They're like, oh, I see that you have month-to-month -month options. I have a client that needs it for four months. Boom, that's the deal wow. right there. And now we build that relationship with that realtor. So also use the MLS. MLS is Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia. Boom, now you're everywhere. Stop, everywhere, everywhere. Now you're All everywhere. We're, we're on so many different websites. That's the way you have to do. You have to. The more channels, be... the better. The more channels, mm -hmm. the better. Be building your own website as well. Promoting the own website. Sharing it with everybody, as you know. We just share it with everybody. We don't, we don't focus on thinking of the Airbnb client. It's yeah. just, we just have an, an option. Any type of client that wants this, that, that's it. And wow. just keep reinvesting that money. That's it. You know, we we like to we like to uh, we like to think that we're just getting started. To be honest with you, you know, 40, 52 units is 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 a is a is a cool number. But I mean, I know people that have thousands of units, ten thousands of units, and I think that that's what we have to look at because at the end of the day, we all in this call have a huge opportunity. We live in the one of the greatest countries. I think it's the greatest country on earth. To be honest with you, I love the United States for the opportunity and the and the business side. You could yeah. you could do amazing things. You know, I, I started, I, I was sleeping on the couch in 2014 and by 2018, my net worth was over a million dollars, which is pretty cool, which is, it doesn't sound like a lot of money in, right now anymore, but it is, it's totally doable, totally plausible. Um, and, uh, and it's totally achievable, but you, you know, once, once you make great money, you got to keep reinvesting and buying more and more properties. And, and I would say one of the biggest niches, um, that I see is the garage conversions whenever yeah. you're buying these houses. Um, Max, we, ha we have Max, our own construction Max, crew. Uh, and I know that my price per square foot to convert a garage, it's usually about $60, $60 a square foot. Let's say it's $100 a square foot to convert a garage. Um, usually in the areas where we're buying, the price per square foot under air sells for 300. So, right? we build so usually, so if you build out your 500 square foot garage, right, which is, you know, at $100, let's say $50,000. Let's say it costs you fifty thousand dollars to convert your garage into five hundred um, square feet under air, and that can sell for three hundred dollars a square foot. You just tripled your money. You just tripled your money. And one of the ways that we've been able to keep doing this so much is because we use the Burr method. Every time that we convert uh, and force appreciate a property, we refinance it, pull out all the equity, and and redeploy that into more property and what is burr burr is a is a really good strategy that uh if you guys heard of bigger pockets bigger pockets also talks about it a lot if you guys don't know what bigger pockets is you should take a look at it because you're going to learn a lot about investments and short-term rentals and any, everything in general but anyway st uh, uh burr strategy is buy rehab refinance rent and repeat and do it all over again yeah, so most of the oh. properties that we buy, we buy at a discount. They're fixer uppers. Uh, you got to make money on the buy. So at the end of the day, Airbnb is a great cash flow. It's a great business model. But long term, the appreciation that the properties are going to have, the depreciation that you can have on your taxes. We don't pay a lot of taxes because we have a bunch of properties and we can depreciate all of them. You can depreciate a property over 27 and a half years. So if you have a bunch of properties, like 30 properties depreciating over 27 and a half years, you can you can depreciate a lot of your income so so we keep buying more and more properties for that reason as well for the appreciation and for the depreciation and for the uh yeah for the tax benefits as well so that's also very very important just like mcdonald's i mean mcdonald's has great cash flow in their and their french fries and their and their you know and their burgers the best, but the real estate sell. that that's the main thing buy and hold these things forever never sell never sell and keep refinancing them and we don't pay off for things we, we owe, you know, on all our properties. We, we could pay them off, but why? When you pay a property off, that money dies. Money's need, money needs to work. Money needs to be always deployed. We always try to keep not a lot of money in the bank. If it was for me, I would have $5,000 in the bank and reinvested everything back into the, into yeah. the market. I have a wife that obviously she's, like my, <laughs> she's my ground, Down right? Um, I'm willing to go all in, all, yeah. all, all in always, right? Um, Money's meant to be spent. It's meant to be exactly, invested. Exactly, yeah. Yes. Invested, invested. But making invested. sure you have a balance with it, right? Yeah. So you got to make sure that you do your research and you put Andres, it. I'm all in. Kelly, I'm all in. Easy, easy, especially now. Especially now when everybody's scared, dude, I'm all in. I put all of my chips in. Oh, he's taking the camera COVID, over. Dude, during COVID 2020 in March, when everybody was like, oh my God, the market's going to crash. The world's going to crash. We're all going to die. I told Kelly, I'm like, baby, we need to buy as many houses as possible right now because everybody's freaking That's... scared. And right now is the biggest opportunity. And we bought 11 houses in in uh in uh during COVID when everybody was scared, and we probably made over $100,000 per property. 
almost a wow. million dollars in in that in that span when everybody was very scared. Right now is a very similar time. Right now, right now it's very, very, Woo. very good times. Wow. This is where we turn millionaires into billionaires. Hey, this is this is Andreas about to walk on fire right here. He's about to walk on fire tomorrow. He's pumped up. We're hey. about to walk on fire literally because we're actually yeah. about to get into the Tony Robbins UFW. <laughs> yeah. All right, so guys, we have about five minutes left of your guys' time here. So here's what I want to do. I want to do rapid fire with some of these questions. All right, you guys ready for it? I'll try and get, I, I was scanning through them, seeing which ones we answer, which ones we haven't. And guys, if you guys want the recording, reach out to the person invited you. We'll get it to you as soon as we can and a checklist. But here we go. How do you, uh, damn, I just had it. Do you, do you share any of the kitchen space at your Airbnbs? Uh, depending on the property. But uh, if when we divide the properties per units, we try to add uh, not a kitchen, but a kitchen net on every area of it. You cannot have more than one kitchen in a single family house zone R1, but you can have wet bars or kitchenettes, which is pretty much a sink. And you can have the cabinets and everything. Just don't put a stove on it. As All long right. as you only have a hot plate, you can plug it in. That's it. You're good. Microwave and a mini fridge. Yeah, so it just depends on the rules and regulations of your where you live, right? In city of Orlando, for example, um, you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be your primary. You can legally do an ADU, right? Uh, an ADU, it's an accessory dwelling unit where you can basically turn your single family house into a duplex, right? We did that with our house where we live in right now. Uh, we have a full bathroom, full kitchen, uh, independent entrance. We have a separate address. We paid impact fees. So in California, it's very popular. In California, you can do an ADU and it's very, very popular. That's one of the ways that you can force appreciate uh, your house. Um, but in the areas that don't allow uh, ADUs or they're very, very, you know, regulated, you can get away with, if you're doing the garage conversion, don't call it an in-law suite or don't call it a, another unit, just call it a master bedroom with a web bar with an independent entrance. And as long as it has a connection to the main house, they're going to approve your plans. Because at the end of the day, houses can have web bars, houses can have a, a master bedroom can have an independent entrance, why not? Right. So that's that's the way that we've done it legally. Um, in, and that's depending important, on the location. important to mention how to make it legally, how to divide the house and make it legally. Yeah, depending on your municipality, I will suggest you do check with your county and city anyway. But as long as the property is connected in between units, as long as you are keeping the house as a single family house all connected, it is okay. You just have different bedrooms that you just like to close the doors on and that's it. And what we do is we put two doors on that door. So we put one door here, one door here, and we have insulation in the middle and we put a knob that you're not able to, that like a key knob, only we have access to it. Just like the hotels, think about it. When yeah. you go to hotels, they also connect the rooms as well. Right. So it's the same way and that's how it is legal. We did the kitchenettes, no kitchens, unless you do the ADU, which I suggest to you if you do wanna make it uh, like a whole unit in itself because the ADU allows you to do a full kitchen, laundry room, address and uh, utilities separated. Well, here's another question. Researching all these government permits is very difficult. Any tips on that? Well, I will tell you that that definitely is the most difficult part about it. And uh, there is no website or app or anything that has information regarding the municipalities and, and rules and regulation. And I will say that that is the hardest part of doing it. The, the way we do it is we just call. Every time we, we see an open. address, yep. we look at what, what municipality is and we call the zoning department on that area and we ask for it because there is no place you can find that. Yeah, super, super easy. Just just call the zoning, say, hey, what's going on? Uh, I want to I wanna know if you can do daily rentals. And you'll but either sometimes get, they don't know. Yeah, you'll either get a, oh, we don't, we don't really regulate that. Or they don't uh, we know. Don't, how we don't know anything get. yet. Okay, so that means that you can do it, you know, un until they pass a law, yay or nay, you know. So that, that's, that's kind of a market where it's like, okay, you're kind of in the gray. Um, that's what we always like to find um, the, prop the, the, the areas. And, and I guarantee you in every state, there are cities, municipalities that are smart that see the bigger picture of, hey, this is another way to make you know money, taxes, raise our property value, legalizing Airbnb, allowing people to turn this into a business so our, our, the property values rise. And yeah. there are cities, municipalities all over the country. You just have to do your research. I just know, and I'll tell you here in, in our area, on the East Coast, Melbourne, 
on the West Coast, uh, Largo. Th those are the ones that I know locally. Uh, but here's a, here's the last question before we, we wrap this up, guys. And again, if you guys want the recording or anything, make sure you reach out to the person who invited you. But here we go. I want to help this person because they bought three Airbnb, three properties for Airbnb in the last year. I have one that's active that's not covering the basic expenses. The other two are just kind of sitting there because of the anxiety. I think you guys covered this a little bit, but I want to get a very specific answer for this person. What ideas do you have or what word of advice can you give to jump stop, jump start these properties? I will say that look at the first, is it a, uh, did they bought or they rented? They bought. They bought. They bought. Okay. So see what market you have around. What are the closest things that you have around outside of the daily, nightly business? And think about what is close to your area and how you can maybe build some relationships with the businesses around that you can promote that place and kind of figure out like that collaboration part of it. So that would be one thing, getting together with like local businesses and other restaurants or things like that to kind of promote. Um, another thing will be check into how many days you are renting this property. How is the period of it? Maybe try it for a monthly rental. Right now, there is a really, really high need of properties like this because people are moving. They've been moving. They've been in transition. People are moving from city to city. This, this has been a lot of movement and people need uh, solutions like this. So think about it, of doing it a, a, a weekly one, a monthly one. Another thing will be... Um, I don't know, maybe look at the amenities that you have in the house. Check what is it that you have inside your house that you can turn into something that's more likable to be an experience for them. Something that's not very inexpensive, like um, like a gazebo in the in the back. You can get, let's say, some concrete, some rock, something cheap, lay it in the backyard, put some four poles and light fixtures and just create a fire pit area for example that's not too inexpensive building those additional things that are going to feel them be comfortable uh and let's talk actually because i think that's a very very specific question that we yeah. may have to dig deeper into your business and understand where you are what you're doing how you're doing it to get kind of give you a better solution yeah we would have to look at the air dna we have to look at the market the address we have to see what the top performing properties are doing and what's the difference between those performing properties and yours and how we can get them there. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, it. We, yeah, we, can, we can definitely help. Yeah. So guys, if you guys want, if, if you guys are open for this too, guys, follow at Airbnb King and Queen on Instagram. They post some really amazing things. And I'm sure if you guys did have any more questions, you might be able to point it to them as well. I know they're super busy with everything going on, but make sure you follow at Airbnb King and Queen on Instagram. Guys, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I know you guys are super busy. You're at Tony Robbins about to walk on fire. And I felt that fire coming from both of you guys. I want to thank you guys both so much for showing up today and just adding value to the real estate community from all over the country and well, from different, from all the country and other countries as well. And again, guys, at Airbnb King and Queen, if you guys want the recording or you guys want the checklist that we're going to be sending out, make sure that you reach out to the person that invited you. Guys, do you have any closing words for everybody as we sign off? Uh, yeah, no, all, all I got to say is uh, never be scared. Um, at the end of the day, um, never, never be afraid to make mistakes at the end of the day. I love making mistakes because um, after every mistake, there is a lesson and I will always um, continue to make mistakes and keep growing. So the sky's the limit, guys. I Thank you. Guys. Awesome. Let's get to I, it. I just sent you guys our uh, private uh, Instagram. Just if you want to have like, you know, on a one-on-one, -on -one, probably better if you text us on our personal one. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. And well, my last questions first. Thank you so much for bringing us up, Nick. This yes. has been amazing. Thank you, Nick. I really You're amazing, appreciate dude. the community that you have built. The community yes. that you have built yes. in, in this business is extremely uh, valuable. And I appreciate you having us as part of that. And just remember, remember guys that all of this is amazing and the business part of it is great but the principles are really what what mm -hmm. makes it so check on the narrow 10 principles remember for me the most important are principle number three and number eight you gotta make sure that you are living in congruence and i appreciate you all and we're happy to share any questions and we're an open book whenever you have any questions and have an amazing day <laughs> awesome appreciate you guys let's walk on some fire Woo! let's do let's it, do it. Let's get it yeah thank, thank you guys you. You guys are awesome um...